In the classic cult film Quest for Fire, a tribe of Neanderthals struggles to keep a single flame alive. The message is clear, if the ember goes out, they will lose their capacity to cook, remain warm, defend themselves from wolves, and, in short, to survive. In fact, the film depicts that Neanderthals have no idea how to make fire. To modern humans, Neanderthals have always served as a philosophical counterpoint. At first, they were the only other type of human that we were aware of existing on Earth, and even after the discovery of other extinct hominin species, they still held a special place as the other, a kind of mirror against which we could measure ourselves. And at first, all of those comparisons were in our favor. After existing for thousands of years in Western Eurasia, Neanderthals vanished around 40,000 years ago, and for a long time, this was thought to be proof that they must have deserved to go extinct in a scientific, if not moral, sense. However, as we shall see, they were much more human than once believed. Remarkably, not long ago anthropologists were still debating whether Neanderthals were even human, used fire or could speak. In truth, they had sophisticated fire-making technology, culture and spoken language. Our sister species were frequently portrayed as either noble savages or demonized as savage brutes. Though it's difficult to enter the mind of a long extinct human species, new insights into the Neanderthal mind imply that they may have been much more cultured, than their previous reputation for being brutally ignorant suggests. The last Neanderthals may have died, but their legacy will live on in perpetuity. Scientists previously believed that Neanderthals were only capable of primitive thought and animalistic savagery, but the image of Neanderthals as brutish, club-wheeling cave thugs is long gone. The proof that Neanderthals were cognitively sophisticated has only grown in recent years, as archaeological data shows that many of the innovations that were once thought to be exclusive to modern humans were actually used by Neanderthals. Anyone who prefers to view human intelligence as an exceptional uniqueness may find it advantageous at this point to acknowledge that Neanderthals were also humans. In fact, adaptive introgression of Neanderthal genes is associated with hair, skin and eye pigmentation in modern humans. For example, two Neanderthal introgressed genes involved in pigmentation are today very common in human populations, again suggesting a history of selection. One of these genes included is well known to have several variants in living people associated with skin and eye pigmentation. This gene is most commonly mentioned as a genetic association with blue versus brown eyes. The haplotype has dozens of variants but only one had been flagged in previous studies of pigmentation even with whole genomes, scientists can't say very precisely what pattern of skin, hair, and eye pigmentation was in ancient populations like the Neanderthals. Nevertheless, these data are consistent, with the hypothesis of recurrent positive selection acting on multiple variants, some of which arose in modern humans and some that were inherited through hybridization with Neanderthals. These genetic variants associated with lighter pigmentation developed around 247,000 years ago, 621,000 and more than 900,000 years ago. Considering our species, Homo sapiens, did not evolve until around 300,000 years ago, the discovery suggests that the genes responsible for lighter pigmentation were present in the genetic material of our hominin ancestors, hundreds of thousands of years before the first modern humans walked the earth. The most interesting observation is that some ancestral light pigmentation genes are shared between the modern humans and archaic hominins including Neanderthals. This suggests that the ancient blood that once coursed through the veins of our sister species had more in common with us than we used to believe. For years, archaeologists have viewed Neanderthals as man the hunter, simple, rugged hunters who only lived in cold, rugged climates. Neanderthals are known for their thick skeletons, which supported strong muscles which they used, to stab great ice age beasts to death and dismember their carcasses. Far from dumb, Club wilding cave thugs, however, these ancient humans were also highly intelligent hunters. We know more about the Neanderthals than any other extinct human species. Thousands of their artifacts and fossils, including several nearly complete skeletons, have been discovered. They hunted the same large game, practiced similar burial rituals, used similar tools, 
walked upright, had language, and even used fire. In fact, they were sophisticated and deadly hunters. Based on an examination of the spears, recent research has shown that early humans possessed sophisticated woodworking abilities that had previously gone unrecognized. For example, in the construction of the spears, Neanderthals dissented the point to increase strength. Furthermore, Neanderthals were manufacturing birch bark tar in the Middle Pleistocene. Based on this evidence, the utilization of wood from trees is an obvious outcome of their intimate arboreal knowledge. Glue is a multifaceted substance. Hafting, or attaching a handle to tools like stone axes, was a huge step forward for humanity. Consider attempting to cut down a tree or even a bamboo shoot with an axe head that lacks a handle. Experimentation has now shown that when Neanderthal scientists used birch tar as hafting adhesive in Italy nearly 200,000 years ago, it was truly their best option. That begs the question of whether they tried other possibilities as well, a process known as experimentation. Researchers examined the birch tar used to affix Neanderthal tools and discovered a much more complex technique for creating the adhesive than previously thought. They compared different methods of creating birch tar to chemical residues found on ancient Neanderthal tools in their paper, Production Method of the Konigsu Birch Tar Documents Cumulative Culture in Neanderthals, published in Archaeological and Anthropological Sciences. The ability to synthesize substances and materials not found in nature is one of the characteristics of human intelligence. Tools were once considered but since several animals have been discovered altering and manipulating materials to be used as tools, it has become a less distinctive sign of intelligent behavior. Synthetic material manufacturing continues to be an important aspect of our cognitive advantage over other animals, as it necessitates sentient thinking, planning, and comprehension of our actions in order to convert raw materials through a learned process. The study shows that modern humans are not alone in this ability, and were not the first to achieve it. Neanderthals' use of birch tar predates any known adaptation by modern humans by 100,000 years. The sticky material was used as an adhesive backing in tools and weapons to connect stone to bone and wood, with the added benefit of being water-resistant, and resistant to organic decomposition. It is thought that Neanderthals made birch tar through a manufactured process or as a found substance scraped from rocks after a fire. The researchers discovered that Neanderthals did not simply find birch tar after a fire, nor did they use the simplest manufacturing method, through a comparative chemical analysis of two birch tar pieces from Germany and, a large reference birch tar collection made with Stone Age techniques. Instead, Researchers discovered that the Neanderthals who made the German birch tar extracted the synthetic adhesive using the most efficient method, a stepwise oxygen-restricted distillation process of underground heating. The authors claim that this degree of complexity is unlikely to have been invented spontaneously. It is possible that the technique began with simpler methods and evolved into the more complex process through experimentation. To test the process that resulted in German birch tar, the researchers used experimental archaeology to recreate five different extraction techniques, two above ground and three below ground. The team analyzed and compared their tar-making techniques with ancient birch tar artifacts using infrared spectroscopy, gas chromatography mass spectrometry, and microcomputed tomography after extracting the birch tar. The presence of oxygen at the time of extraction left a distinct mark on the experimental tars, creating a signature that clearly distinguished above ground from below ground methods. The ancient artifacts corresponded to the underground manufacturing process. Unlike the above ground techniques, both the ancient tar artifacts and the below ground experiments showed some soil mineral interaction and were free of soot related carbons. Underground transformative techniques are more difficult to execute than above-ground transformative techniques because some elements cannot be observed or corrected after the procedure begins, necessitating a more precise setup procedure. In recent years, archaeological evidence has revealed that many of the technological firsts thought to be modern human inventions were already in use among Neanderthals. At this point, Admitting that Neanderthals were humans may benefit anyone who prefers to think of human intelligence as an exceptional uniqueness. 
Neanderthal birch tar making appears to be the first documented manifestation of this kind in human evolution, the authors write. According to new research, cave-dwelling Neanderthals discovered how to use the chemical properties of manganese dioxide to start wood fires 60,000 years ago. The study, published in Scientific Reports, contradicts previous research that claimed these humanoids gathered chunks of black manganese or solely to use as a pigment in makeup or paint. The following are the reasons why archaeologists changed their minds many chunks of black ore have been discovered at Neanderthal sites in France, and the majority of these are composed primarily of manganese dioxide, a chemical that is currently used in alkaline batteries. Some of the samples have scratch marks on them, as if the ore had been ground into powder. If the cave dwellers needed a black pigment, they only had to look at the charcoal from the fire. It doesn't make sense for them to have spent valuable resources gathering this specific type of rock. Furthermore, the locations where they most likely sourced the ore were abundant in other types of soft, black rocks that would have worked just as well as a pigment. The fact that the Neanderthals preferred manganese dioxide over the others suggests that it was used for a purpose related to some other distinguishing feature. While the researchers found no direct evidence that the manganese dioxide was being used as a fire starter, they did discover that when powdered and added to wood chips, the manganese dioxide or significantly reduced the temperature required to cause the wood to combust. In tests, the powder made from the ores found on site outperformed even pure commercial grade magnesium dioxide as a fire starter. This property is not shared by any of the other soft black ores in the area. Nobody knows how Neanderthals figured this out, but maybe we shouldn't be surprised. It's possible that an artistic intent gave way to a more practical application. Hundreds of thousands of years of daily experimentation would result in some incredible discoveries. And that appears to be the case in this case, as these ancient chemists unlocked the secret to sparking a pretty sweet, and totally useful reaction. Perhaps the Neanderthals invented glue. Perhaps not. In any case, hominins were affixing stone tools to handles with birch bark tar at least 200,000 years ago. However, humans were baking fish in earthen ovens nearly 800,000 years ago, rather than simply barbecuing them over an open fire. This implies a deep and intimate understanding of fire. But if Neanderthals were so smart, why did they go extinct? That's a question we'll never really have an answer to though it doesn't stop any of us from putting forth some pretty elaborate scenarios. Many researchers are loath even to speculate on the cause of Neanderthals' demise, but a combination of the cumulative effect of repeated population busts eventually did them in. The culmination of 100,000 years of climate hitting Neanderthals hard, their population diving during the cold years, rebounding some during warm years, then diving further when it got cold again. And then finally, as Neanderthals retreated into present-day southern Spain and parts of Croatia toward the end of their time, modern human beings were right on their heels. In fact, some argue that any encounter was likely to be hostile. Brotherly love is not the way you would describe any interaction between different groups of humans. Indeed, modern humans were superior warriors and wiped out the Neanderthals, who were no pacifists themselves. Modern humans are very competitive and really good at using projectile weapons to kill from a distance, they also probably worked together better in large groups, providing a battlefield edge. In the end, Neanderthals, though handy, big-brained, brawny and persistent, went the way of every human species but one. There have been a great many experiments at being human preceding us and none of them made it, so we should not think poorly of Neanderthal just because they went extinct. Given that Neanderthal possessed the very traits that we think guarantee our success should make us pause about our place here on Earth. Indeed, these discoveries raise many questions. With the Neanderthals, it is becoming abundantly clear that there was not a huge evolutionary gap between them and modern humans, given their skills and capacities. Archaeological evidence now suggests they were capable of symbolic thought, had a knowledge of chemistry, medicine and cooking, and perhaps some capacity for artistic expression. They may even have taught modern humans new skills when the two species met and interbred in the freezing forests of Europe. Given how much time has passed since Neanderthals roamed Eurasia, 
it is impossible to accurately reconstruct their lives and deaths. Nevertheless, the mystery of these human ancestors and tantalizing hints that they were similar to us continue to inspire research and debate to this day.